What we do here is go back, 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 back. back. No matter where you are in the city of Pittsburgh, you are steps away from experiencing a work of art. Public art is a distinguishing part of our home. It is freely accessible and enables people to experience art in their daily life outside of museums or other cultural institutions. It reflects our history and our evolving culture. It helps to give our communities a stronger sense of identity and place. Successful public art can delight, challenge, illuminate, and educate. Most of all, public art helps create a sense of civic vitality in our city. Public art matters, and public art matters to the city of Pittsburgh. I'm Liz Barentine with the City Channel, and today we are going to be talking about public art. Warren Brown is the public art manager of the city planning division. Let's go talk with him to learn more about how the government and artists work together here. Thank you very much for joining us today. We're really excited to learn more about public art here in Pittsburgh. Um, can you tell us a bit about yourself and your role in the city? I'm the head of the public art division in city planning. Uh, three of my major duties include staffing the city's art commission who reviews and approves facilities, artwork, etc. on city property. Um, I also conserve and maintain the city's art collection and monuments and memorials and I plan and implement new commissions of art for the city. Awesome and when did the art commission get started? Long time ago, 1911. Uh, it was established at the same time the Department of City Planning and the Planning Commission were established. And it was established at a time when uh, major cities were into the City Beautiful movement, where uh, they wanted to ensure high quality design of everything in the public realm. Uh, in the city. So that's really been its mandate all these years. Uh, it's made up of architects, artists, and laypersons to ensure high quality design in the public realm in the city of Pittsburgh. And what kind of projects has the Art Commission done in the past? Well, it uh, is largely a regulatory commission, um, so it itself does not commission new artworks, nor does it commission new design, but it rather uh, reviews and approves proposals either coming from the city or third parties. Uh, it had a large role in our sister bridges in downtown, um, even sort of to the point of revamping the uh, design competition for the bridges, uh, which I think is pretty phenomenal. Um, Many projects over the years, uh, too many to even name, but Shinley Plaza uh, was one of them that it had a, a large role in. And most currently, our new Frick Environmental Center that'll be built over the next couple of years was a major development uh, in Pittsburgh that the Art Commission had a large role in approving a design, asking for revisions to design to get it uh, right uh, to the quality that we expect here in the city. Wow, those projects have really made the city a better place. Can you tell us a bit about what we're sitting in front of now? Yeah, uh, this is something we're really proud of. Uh, it's the first fully artist-designed bridge in the city. Uh, it's only one of two that we really know of. This was designed by artist Sheila Klein, uh, who's out of Bow, Washington. She was selected by National Call Invitational uh, for proposals for a bridge. And it's interesting uh, in and of itself, but it's also an interesting model for the city, uh, whereby we placed an artist on a design team with bridge engineers and architects. So. Uh, you know, we, we would have to look long and hard and we would never find an artist who actually knew how to build a bridge uh, herself. Uh, so the model is getting an artist selected to be on that team uh, from the ground up, starting from scratch, whereby uh, his or her visions can be realized through the engineer's expertise. But likewise, the engineers who are very nuts and bolts oriented and so forth, uh, might not have the creative impulse that an artist would have. So this bridge uh, was probably about seven years in the making uh, from the design uh, development through engineering, funding. Um, it was largely funded by PennDOT on a lot of local foundations like Heinz Endowments. Whole Foods, which is next door to us, also contributed money towards it. Um, Councilman Peduto at that time also contributed money towards it. Um, the glass sequins that you see on the cyclone fence were created by the Pittsburgh Glass Center just down the street. Um, Public Works and another local artist, Sandy Kessler Kaminsky, helped us do the uh, floorboard section here, the uh, painted section here. 
Um, so it had a lot of community and local involvement as well as the artists. And we're pretty proud of it. It's been in for two years now. It's really heavily utilized and uh, we're really glad it's here. It sounds like a huge collaboration, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of artists in the city who would love to get involved in some other projects like that. Mm -hmm. um, how can Pittsburgh residents learn more about the Art Commission and learn how to have their artwork supported? They can attend the Art Commission, actually, and I wish that they would. Um, the hearings are monthly uh, at 200 Roth Street in downtown, first floor hearing room. Same place, Planning Commission, Historic Review Commission meet. Um, it's open and free to the public. Uh, we allow and encourage public testimony, either on behalf or neutral or against a project that's at the table. And the way we look at it, we're, we're not a commission that really tries to bang the gavel and just say no or yes to a project, but rather we try to give critique so that the project can refine itself and have more bites at the apple in terms of high quality design. So in doing that, we consider it uh, somewhat of an educational experience or an experience for dialogue. And what we would love to see is more people attending uh, and becoming our design ambassadors for the neighborhood so that they can help us demand high quality design. So that's on the Art Commission side, uh, but people can call me, they can find me on the website, they can set up a meeting. Uh, we don't have an ongoing program of new commissions of art, but we do from time to time, especially with our Percent for Art ordinance and projects that are coming online. Uh, we do. We're trying to expand a lot of our temporary art programs, um, all of which are distributed through Greater Pittsburgh Arts Council, the city's website, etc. But if artists just have an idea uh, and want to just pitch a proposal, even if it's mildly crazy, uh, we'll listen. Uh, it, it's, it's interesting to me. It's something I'm passionate about. Uh, and I would love to talk to more artists and help them, either on city property or private property. I can at least point them to resources. Uh, if the city doesn't have an opportunity um, in the wings, so to speak, um, I can point them to re local resources and national resources at my home. Well, thank you so much for sharing this information with us. Your work is really important. We greatly appreciate it. Well, thank you. Now we are going to go visit the Workers sculpture in the Southside Riverfront Park, which was created by Tim Collin and the Industrial Arts co-op. Tim Collin is recognized as a significant artist here in the city and his body of work has greatly impacted the region. I've seen some of your artwork in the north side near the Children's Museum, at the Cary Fur Furnace in Rankin, and at the Pittsburgh Center for the Arts. Um, your artwork has been a great inspiration to me and to many other people, and it's an honor to be speaking with you here today. Could you tell us a bit more about your artwork in the city and where some of your inspirations come from? In early, I think it was just the geography and the landscape and the changing topography of Pittsburgh that really challenged me as an artist to make things that competed somewhat on the landscape. And certainly the, the urban landscape and the history that we have in our city and especially the ties to industry has been a very super strong motivator for me and my work and other than that I think it's it's just the people that are here and you know the underlying work ethic that I feel makes Pittsburgh unique uh, to be a, a contributor and a, and a participant. Where did the idea for the workers sculpture come from and can you tell us about its story? The story behind the workers is it originated as um, a city of Pittsburgh commission where uh, the city of Pittsburgh and especially uh, Mayor Tom Murphy put out a call for artist proposals to commemorate industry and specifically the steel industry. So myself and a few other artists put together a proposal and we were already in the formation of um, banding together to do art projects. So it was perfect timing for us to be uh, considered for such an important task of uh, um, making a memorial to industry. Seems like it was a huge collaboration to make this piece. Could you tell us a bit about who all was involved? At the time of receiving the award to, to build the sculpture, myself and a few other colleagues were forming an arts group called the Industrial Arts Collective and we essentially came together to share resources and share ideas and we were really fortunate to 
land such a significant project such as this to commemorate uh, the steel industry in Pittsburgh. So the group sort of rallied around the idea of producing, design and producing uh, this important piece. Uh, the process of doing that, however, took many years and many more collaborations other than just the artist team. We raised a significant amount of funds from the foundation community and some of the local businesses. And then ultimately the installation of the sculptures, which was one of the most dynamic things that I've ever participated with, was uh, also really incredible and in the number of people and companies that came together that allowed the piece to be fully embraced and, and recognized for what it is. And to, to name a few of those supporters on the install, it, um, we couldn't have made this as well without a company called PJ Dick Corporation, who are a, a very large builder in the region. And um, the Iron Workers Apprentices uh, did the final install. So not only did we receive certified laborers to complete the task, at the end of the day we were able to transfer sort of our artistic ownership to the men and women who really make things in the world and to see their acceptance of our piece really allowed it to be complete, not just physically and structurally but also uh, thematically and poetically. It really came together around the support of uh, a lot of different companies and funders to make it a, a piece for, for Pittsburghers. What was the process like of building this sculpture? We essentially set up shop in a former steel mill building in Hazelwood and were allowed to work there for about 10 years to fabricate the pieces. Uh, the I-beams that make up the figurative elements of the workers came from the hot metal bridge when they renovated that structure about 15 years ago. So, um, and a lot of the other materials in the, in the workers themselves, in which we called their safety gear or their armor, came from one of the last buildings at the, the Jones and Lachlan electric furnaces. So it was really great to take some of the, the bones of industry that were probably being recycled to make appliances or car, car bodies or um, sheet metal goods. So what you see are the, the figures which are in some ways exaggerated to show the importance of, of work ethic in industry rather than if you've ever been in a working mill, you know that the, the properties of the mill are so gigantic and just completely overwhelming compared to the scale of people. So we exaggerated the importance of the human aspect and allowed the ladle in this piece to be the symbolic item that uh, reflects back on industry itself. Why do you think public art is important and how can the city government help promote public art? Generally, public art serves a really important role in, in Pittsburgh. I mean, I, I feel that, especially now, given the, the rebirth of this, the renewal of the city currently and the changes that have been made, I think the opportunity is there to really set ourselves apart and support local artists and the local art economy, which I, I feel has maintained its responsibility in allowing Pittsburgh to be a marketable destination. I feel the arts community is not solely responsible for that, but the arts community has really paid its dues in allowing Pittsburgh to be an exciting place. Uh, so I, I feel that city government doesn't necessarily owe those parties or individuals, but I think in terms of looking at ways of supporting individual artists and artist practices, I, I think it, it's just now perfect timing. So. Well, thank you so much for meeting with us today. You're welcome, thank you. If you'd like to learn more about public art in the city, you can visit pittsburghpa.gov. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Pittsburgh Public Art. Thank you.